Our first lesson comes from Genesis, the 17th chapter. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. When Abram fell on his face and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people, people shall come from her. When Abraham fell on his face and laughed, and said to himself, Can a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Can Sarah, who is ninety years old, bear a child? God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations, kings of peoples, shall come from her. Our second lesson comes from Romans, the fourth chapter. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the inheritance of the law who are to be the hearers, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith. In order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the inheritance of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. 
for he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of, of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into, into existence the things that do not exist, hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations. According to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about 100 years old. And when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb, no distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith, and he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as, a right, as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Join me in prayer. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. We believe that in good times and in bad times, God reaches out. When the world was descending into chaos and Floodwaters threatened the planet. God reached out to Noah. When the Jewish people faced starvation in a time of famine, God reached out through Joseph and the surplus grain of Egypt. When the Egyptians later enslaved the Jewish refugees, God reached out through Moses. And so the pattern continued through the history of the Jewish people. And then God reached out through Jesus of Nazareth to bring salvation and hope into the world, to transform the finality of the tomb into the eternal hope of the resurrection. And God continues to reach out to us today through the work of the Holy Spirit and, th and, to the, and through the witness and mission of the church. During this Lenten season, we're taking a closer look at God who reaches out in love and care. And today we focus on how God reached out through the persons of Abram and Sarai of the Old Testament. Abraham is the patriarch of three great religions. In Judaism, he is the founding father of the covenant, that special relationship between the Jewish people and God. In Christianity, Abraham is the prototype of all believers, both Jewish and Gentile. And in Islam, Abraham is seen as the link in the chain of prophets, that chain which began with Adam and came to a climax with Muhammad. In our first scripture lesson this morning that Sean read to us, this passage in Genesis tells us of this special covenant that God established with Abraham and Sarah. And in that second passage that he read from Romans, the Apostle Paul lifts up the faith of Abraham and Sarah and claims it for all who follow Jesus Christ. And in our troubled and conflicted world, perhaps we can look to the commitment and the faith of Abraham and Sarah as an example for us in our daily lives. You know, the story of Abraham and, and Sarah is straightforward, and the condensed version sort of goes like this. Abram 
and that was his birth name, is married to Sarai, that was her birth name, and both live with Abram's father, Terah. Life is good, but Abram and Sarai are unable to have children. And Abram's father dies, and then God speaks both to Abram and Sarai. He says, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the ones who curse you I will curse, and in, all you, the, and in you all the families of earth shall be blessed. With this calling, this invitation of God, Abram and Sarah and their household begin a journey, which eventually leads them to the land of Canaan, today what we call Israel and Palestine, and that land has been promised to them by God. By now, Abram has fathered a child with his wife's servant, as was the custom when uh, a woman was barren, and he's now facing what we would consider to be old age. It's 24 years since he left his father's homestead. And God comes to Abram and Sarai again to make a covenant with them, to make an agreement with them that they will be the parents of a multitude of nations. And he gives them new names. Abram he calls Abraham, which means the father of nations, and Sarai he calls Sarah, which means princess. Now both Abraham and Sarah laugh at having children at their age. But Sarah conceives, bears a son, and they name him Isaac, which means he will laugh. Later on in their lives, there's more drama and testing, but that covenant with them, that promises made and shared, stays with them as the nation increases and as his descendants indeed do found many nations. Last week we looked at the covenant God made with Noah, which was a promise on the part of God that he would never again destroy the world with water. But the covenant that God makes with Abraham and Sarah is more than a promise. It's like a, a contract between two parties. There are things God will do, and there's things that Abraham and Sarah are to do, and their descendants after them. That's basically the historical story of Abraham and Sarah and the covenant as told in the Bible. Later on in history, the Jewish people will disrespect their part of the covenant. They will allow the worship of other gods in the land, and some will even worship those gods, and the response is that their nation is conquered, their temple is destroyed, and many are carried off into Babylon. It's only through the grace of God that their captivity is ended, but the nation is never quite the same. In Romans, Paul teaches us about the importance of Abraham and Sarah, and especially their faith. They're not really special people. Typical farmers and herdsmen of the day, they had their share of pleasure and pain, joy and sorrow, success and failure, they had not accomplished anything really noteworthy, nor did they have any unique qualities. In other words, they had done really nothing to merit this special attention from God. They did not even know God at first, but God called to them. And I like to think that God was calling to them like he was calling to many men and women. What made Abraham and Sarah different was that they responded, they answered the call, they had faith. Now, sometimes it's good to try to put yourselves in the shoes of some of the biblical people we meet. And when I put myself in the shoes of Abraham and Sarah, the only thing I can say is that their response was remarkable. They were well into middle age looking to old age. They were a comfortable part of the family household 
It was not the time in life to pick up everything and journey to an unknown land. The new land, even if they got there, would not be important to them because they had no children to leave it to. Yet when God called, they responded. They had no history with God, but they placed their trust in God. They really didn't know the nature of God, but they sensed that God really cared. And they did not know God's full plan, but they were willing to go ahead as God directed them. Simply, they had faith. It was all about faith. Faith which kept them in relationship with God over the many years. Faith which sustained them even when, through the passage of time, they thought having children was well past possible. They had faith which remained even when they experienced pitfalls and conflicts and failures. This is why Paul saw in the story of Abram and Sarah so many later years later the importance of their faith. For their faith did not weaken. Their faith was not compromised by distrust. Their faith enabled them to continue to give praise and glory to God. And their faith convin convinced them that God's promises would be kept and that that covenant, that arrangement, that agreement would remain alive and vital. And they carried that faith with them in their journeys and planted it firmly in the promised land. And it was their faith which helped shape the way they lived, the way they loved, the way they worshiped. And it's this faith, Paul said, that we who follow Jesus Christ can inherit. We too live in difficult times. We live in times of conflict and violence. We live in times of false news and claims of false news. We live in times in which extreme acts of violence have unfortunately almost become routine and expected. We're no longer shocked. We've almost become numb to atrocities. And yet, in the midst of these difficult times, I think there's hope. Hope which is seen in the response of the survivors and families in Parkland, Florida. For out of that tragedy there and their anger and frustration, they've been galvanized to act. And I think are bringing a sense of hope that things could change. And that hope is, I think, sparking action in other communities around the country. And that hope comes out of a faith that is similar to Abraham's. It's a faith which responds to the urgings of God, even though we might not recognize the presence of God. It's a faith which enables us to see the possibility of a better future if we act to use our voices now. It's a faith which trusts that even if we begin the journey, that if we begin the journey, we'll find our way to something new. Now, faith is not the easy way, but it may be the answer on how we get from the unacceptable present to a better future. I don't pretend to know the specifics on what should be done to get us to that better place or even what that better future may look like in particular, but I do know we can't remain where we are, that we have to have faith and we have to act. We need to start to do something. Will we make mistakes along the way? Probably. Abraham and Sarah sure did. So trust is the key as we take one step at a time, and we can do this knowing that when we have a misstep, God's grace and forgiveness is available to us in abundance. And he wants us to keep walking. And he'll be with us wherever we go. Those of us in the community of faith in the church have a great contribution to make to our world in this time and place. 
we bring our sense of call and our commitment and our commission by God. We bring our understanding of God's work in the world. We bring the values that we draw out of God's word. And we bring a sense of trust, which comes from being in a long relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And most of all, like our ancestors Abraham and Sarah, we bring the gift of faith. Amen.